Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ori and the Will of the Wisps Main Quest Order Tournament 2023, where we are into our second match in the semi-finals, featuring our number two seed, Ryan, and our number three seed, Seal. This is bound to be an amazing, amazing race. Two top-tier runners who are one seed apart and have this one race as the only thing between them and meeting um, Scarfelt in the finals. So it's all or nothing, single elimination. Both of our runners have to give it their absolute all in order to beat the other one, come out on top, make it to the finals. And it could go either way. Both these runners have had sub hour times this tournament. Ryan PB'd in prelims. Steel's last race was 40 seconds off of their PB. So like, it's, both of our runners have just been killing it lately. And we do also have some extra fun facts, uh, courtesy of our amazing truck, Licks. Um, so Ryan's fun fact uh, is that they are, like, the master of um, regen and dash tech. They found and adapted a lot of the regen sentry dash strats, uh, which hopefully we'll be seeing some of those in Silent Woods in about the middle of the run. And Ryan also has a lot of extra wave dashes routed in to just blast through some extra areas. So it'll be great to see some of those. Seal, on the other hand, their fun facts are definitely more fun. They're having a blast with this race, uh, or with um, with this tournament. They uh, <laughs> they have predicted that they would actually lose to Ryan here in the in the predictions on Challenge, <laughs> which uh, might happen, but like it's a 50-50 coin flip at this point. They also said that their early game is bad and their late game is, and I quote, stonks. <laughs> so yeah, definitely having some fun with this. Uh, on his side. Hopefully Ryan's having fun well as our runners are getting right into the run. Uh, unlike last race, if you caught that, where our runners both used RTA strats, these runners will both be using in-game time strats. So that will mean a lot of pausing, quitting to menu, and then reloading. And the reason that they do that is because we run this game with a loadless timer. So any loading from their computers is not timed at all. So you'll see their timers pause when they do these quit to menus. That just makes the game a lot more fair and balanced for people of differing uh, monetary levels. So if you can't afford the beefiest computer in the universe, you can still run. And both of our runners will be using the loadless time um, to quit to menu in order to skip some minor cutscenes in the race. But we are already down into first, uh, not permanent ability, but the first really cool weapon of the game, Torch, um, which allows our runners to attack really fast and to hover by using the upswing. So keep an eye out on Seal's side on the right. Uh, I don't know directions anymore. <laughs> but Seal is attempting a Torch hover, gets a really nice wall jump on his second try, and makes it all the way over. By doing that trick, our runners are able to skip a little bit of a combat section. Um, Ryan's going for it as well and gets it. Now, back eyes to Seal's side. Um, in order to keep the torch, uh, our runners have to do a really tight keystone jump, uh, and Seal gets it, I think, third try. Ryan gets it first. So that's a really difficult trick. Uh, both of our runners are making it look pretty easy, and they will be able to get that extra keystone and move on. Seal does have to take a little bit of a detour here to grab an extra bit of spirit light that Ryan picked up earlier. That will let Ryan take the lead for just uh, this very early portion. There's still quite, quite a bit to come. But with that one keystone found, they can go talk to talk <laughs> and complete his quest, um, the first main quest, which will give them the second keystone that they need to open the door that we see on Ryan's screen. And here is the first use of the quit to menu that I mentioned earlier. Our runners will both be doing it. Again, their loads aren't counted. So while they wait for these loads to happen, the door just magically opens behind the scenes. <laughs> And that will let our runners jump into the water quickly, put out their torch so they don't soft lock, and then they will be into the Howl fight. Howl um, is the first boss of the game. We will be doing all of the bosses in this game. And he is... He's fairly easy. He's the first boss of the game. There's not a lot that can really go wrong. Um, but there is still definitely time to be saved. Maybe not in this running section. But once our runners pick up the torch, Ryan will be grabbing it first, followed by Seal. We need to get 14 hits on Howl. And Howl knocks them back periodically with his attacks. So we see Ryan take a knockback there. Uh, often you only get one knockback. So Ryan gets 
all like one and a half knockbacks. Steel as well, both of them managing to hit the ground, regain their footing, and bat the wall a couple more times in order to finish off their fights really, really close together. And so with that, the prologue of the game is completed. Well, skip the prologue, but the uh, tutorial? The intro? The start of the game <laughs> is completed. And our runners will be neck and neck as they head in to grab our first permanent pickup and permanent weapon of the run, which is Sword. Now, Sword, while you can't hover quite as well as you could with Torch, there's definitely still some cool movement you can do with it. We'll see if any of our runners decide to go for a uh, strat here where you jump on a log to make it kind of swing down, and then you can use that lowered height to just barely get under a log. So eyes on Ryan's screen? No, they're not going for it. Eyes on Seals? No, okay. I, I definitely agree with our runners on that. Uh, this is a very difficult trick. Uh, if you miss it, you lose like 30 seconds, but it only saves like like one. <laughs> Maybe a little more than that, but still, it's it's a very high risk reward tr trick. And in a tournament setting where you can be feeling nervous and where everything is potentially on the line uh, in a single elimination, it's it's it can be very nice to do safe strats. And again, doesn't lose too much time to go the overhead route. Both our runners will be taking that. Uh, hopefully, showing off some more sword hovers later on in the run, as well as of course they're using flashes here to gain some extra height in between their jumps. Um, and that will let them progress very, very quickly on to the best skill in the entire game. Uh, don't question it. It is double jump. And so we are going to see a slight divergence from our runner's routes after they grab double jump. If you keep an eye on Seal's screen, uh, he will be going upwards here and grabbing this uh, shard. Yeah, shard, uh, which is sticky. Uh, that will, that's not necessary, but it is very, very helpful for an upcoming trick, which Ryan will now have to do without Sticky. So, that loses a little bit of time for Seal, but it could potentially make up that time if it helps him with his door skip, which it almost certainly will. We'll just have to see if Ryan can get it first try without Sticky. Um, so yeah, both runners will be coming out up to that in like 10 seconds, so Ryan will be there first, so keep an eye on the left screen. Uh, what our runners will need to do is bounce off of a squonky in midair in order to refresh their double jump and use their up slash uh, to get to like a tiny little pixel wall that they can use to refresh their wall jump and double jump. Uh, and therefore just climb up this cavern. So eyes on Ryan's screen right now. He's going for, okay, he's taking a little bit of a safe strat. Again, not grabbing uh, sticky, but does go for the more um, standard strat. And yeah, okay, Ryan makes it up first try. Very, very well done. Almost falls back down. Doesn't. Uh, it gave me a little bit of a heart attack, but Ryan seems to be taking it in stride and is moving forward. Uh, it looks like Seal's doing a couple of quit to menus to reset the Squonky's position and will be, oh, will be getting it. That looked really close. Uh, they didn't even do the normal sick, sticky setup. Uh, <laughs> They just used it for just a little bit of safety there, grabbing onto that absolutely minuscule wall. Um, but both runners are getting that pretty quickly, all things considered. Uh, that's That trick is bonkers levels of hard. I'd say that's probably the hardest trick in the run, um, at least in terms of how much time it saves too. There are, there are a couple of really, really stupid things that save like two seconds, but those don't count. <laughs> we'll see if our runners go for those later on. For now, they'll just be heading back up through this prologue area. Now that it's not raining and flooded, they can grab Regenerate, which we have already seen Ryan grab. So Regenerate is not required for our runners, but in terms of speedrun utility, it's actually one of the best skills, as you'll hopefully see very soon. Uh, it's actually kind of useless until we get Dash, but then once we get Dash, oh boy. Uh, Ryan especially, like I mentioned, is a master of this tech, so... We'll be seeing some great things from him and some amazing wave dashes from Seal too, I'm sure. But until dash, uh, regen will just kind of sit in our inventory unused as we keep going around collecting some spirit light as well as you see on Ryan's screen going for a shard uh, called resilience. So resilience makes us take less damage, which um, is very, very important for another upcoming trick. This entire early section of the game is really just about setting up one trick after another. And so Here's another trick on Ryan's side of the screen. Um, Ryan is going to use some weird uh, walls here to just barely get over and under all this tree. And with that palm frond, he can jump 
over a cutscene trigger, skipping the cutscene, and immediately buying Sentry from over, which allows him to do this. <laughs> I love that move. It's so cool to see. You just, um, if you press Sentry and Sword on the exact same frame when on the ground, you just get launched up into the air. It's, it's one of the best movement um, abilities in the run, and we have it at minute 7, so we will be using this constantly throughout the entire run. Uh, Seal grabbing it as well, and we'll be following Ryan into the bow area, just using the sentry jumps that we have in order to launch themselves in the air, skipping a ton of puzzles along the way. It should also be noted that there is a variation of sentry jumps that's called aerial sentry jumps, which happen when you're in the air, obviously. Um, but unlike grounded sentry jumps, aerial sentry jumps are way harder. Uh, they require an exact frame-perfect press three seconds between sentry and sword. There's no consistent way to get them other than to have god-tier muscle memory and timing. And so uh, we'll hopefully be seeing our runners go for some of them and nail them uh, throughout this race because they look cool and they can save quite a bit of time if our runners can do them well. Um, Ryan was 15 seconds ahead of PB. Uh, Bowtree um, did have a little bit of a face plant on the mosquito, so that will lose him, unfortunately, a bit of time. But um, he still in the lead over Seal, which is all that really matters for this race in terms of the semifinals getting to the finals. Um, both runners now grabbing the eye stones, which are just keystones in disguise. Um, we're still having a little bit of trouble with that bow shot. Uh, hits the ceiling, but does manage to recover quickly enough. Both runners having just minor snags through this area, but recovering very, very well. And now both of them will be opening up the giant frog face and moving on to probably the... I don't know if this is the second hardest trick in the run. Maybe like third or fourth. It's really difficult, is what I'm saying. This is the poison water swim, hollow swim, uh, blind swim, whatever you want to call it. They're really swimming, and it won't be very fun. <laughs> so check it out Ryan's screen. Uh, we'll be using regen and jump at the same frame to get extra iframes, diving down into the poison water with resilience to take a little bit more damage, getting a save point midway through, and then respawning to get all the way down. First try for Ryan. Very, very well done. <laughs> Avoids the explosion of the enemy with a pogo. Beautiful. Absolutely perfect. Uh, Seal, unfortunately, does have a little bit of a mistake getting to that save point the first time down. So we'll need to keep going for this trick. Um, it's There are setups for it, but they're not always 100% consistent, um, especially on the way back up. So we might see some more floundering from both of our runners there. But Seal does manage to get through second time. Again, very well done. But that does give Ryan, who got through first time, a little bit more of a lead heading forward as he will be grabbing Dash. And again, dash is what really enables regen. So uh, we won't be using any one of any uh, wave dashes immediately, as Ryan will need to go over here to pick up some extra spirit light, and then we'll be doing a little bit of a trick here to get to that wall and then get over. So yeah, that skips climbing up the long way around. Um, and then of course we need to go up, which wave dashes don't really help for. Luckily, we have sentry jumps, and sentry jumps very much let us go up. <laughs> So Ryan will be ascending while Seal has finished his descent and grabbed Dash himself. So that is a bit of a lead for Ryan, but again, nothing that can't be passed because the run still has 50-ish minutes left to go and there is a lot more difficult things coming up for our runners. So <laughs> stay tuned, of course, for that. Ryan will be grabbing... Oh, I forget which one this is. It's either Quick Shot or Splinter. Um, we will be grabbing both of them over the course of this early game section, uh, and that's because, one, they're really, really convenient, both of them are just kind of like right along our path, and then two, it's because when used together, bow becomes an absolute shotgun. It will obliterate enemies, and it's fantastic to see, and oh boy, okay, we're already, <laughs> Ryan is attempting to upswim, there's so much going on. Um, that upswim is even more difficult than the downswim. And Ryan absolutely just nails it as well, <laughs> including a regen sentry jazz. You don't need to do that. You can just sentry jump. But uh, Ryan goes for the swag strat that he helped develop. Um, and that will launch him up to the lever, letting him pull it. Uh, does fall down a little bit, but nothing that a sentry jump can't quickly fix. So he can hit his purple eyeball and be getting on with the run. Meanwhile, Seal attempting the upswim. Again, very, very difficult. Not a super consistent setup. Uh, died the first time, but this second time does manage to get to the midway checkpoint, 
takes an intentional vest here in order to get some extra iframes. And there we go. Seal is also through the upswim with a midair sentry jump to get up to that lever as well. Ryan also showing off how Ori can just float in midair if you enter certain cutscenes from too high up. <laughs> There's a there's another cutscene that I hope our runners will play with later, where you can just have Ori bouncing up and down in the water during that cutscene. But ooh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of, sorry, not speaking of, but I I've been mentioning uh, Ryan's uh, wave dashes a lot, and there was a great one right there, going right over the Hornbug fight with an aerial sentry dash in order to get to the bash tree as fast as possible. Looks like he's setting up for the bow shot. Okay, doesn't manage to get it. So we'll just watch this little bit of a tree cutscene. But yeah, that is that wave dash is bonkers um so ryan pulling it off i think first try uh maybe second i it's just oh he's so good at this tech i cannot believe that like he's just pulling this off so casually in a tournament race seal also gets a great wave dash right on through the hornbug arena will be following um Ryan trying to make up as much time as possible in order to win this race himself. Um, so both of our runners still at approximately the same place will be giving each other a bit of a high five as Ryan goes firstly to collect the other of the bow upgrades, either quick shot or splinter. Um, again, I don't remember which one's which, I'm so sorry, but we grabbed them both like back to back. So, okay, this one is splinter, the other one is quick shot. <laughs> and we do have a little bit of an update from our truck that there is a 20 second difference between the runners. I believe that was at um, Dash, but we also see that Ryan at that point was 13 seconds ahead of PB. So has lost a little bit of time from the 15 seconds that he was at Bowtree, but still ahead of PB in a tournament race. Ryan, holy guacamole, my dude. <laughs> At putting on a clinic and Steel will have to do ridiculously well to keep up uh, uh, or maybe Ryan will have to make some mistakes. Again, there's a lot of the game left to go. We're only about a fourth of the way through, um, but both these runners are still doing incredibly, incredibly well. Ryan has already uh, hit Quolock. We'll be doing another wave dash to launch past the Hornbug Arena again uh, because wave dashes are awesome and Hornbug is slow. <laughs> And with Quolock's quest in hand, we can continue on our objective of the main quest order. So that next involves, oh, a bow launch. Oh, there are so many cool tricks. Ryan is just pulling everything out of the hat and getting it like perfectly every time. Super, super cool to see, even if I can't commentate everything as fast as he's running it. <laughs> but our runners do next have to go to the Wellspring uh, in order to get the clean water back into the forest. The, not the Blind Forest, but the Will of the Wisp Forest. <laughs> Ryan is stopping at Twilight here to use some of the Spirit Light that we have been collecting and routing in um, at the early game. That will let him uh, grab a upgrade for Splinter and the ability Overcharge. So Overcharge is really important in this run. It doubles uh, the amount of energy we can use but it also doubles the amount of damage we can take. Ryan, unfortunately, does show that off, taking a quick dip in the poison water, which is a lot of damage already, but with double damage, uh, just as we eat through Ori's health bar, a little bit of an unfortunate death, but maybe that is some time for Seal to catch up here. Seal at their own shop will be buying the same upgrades because overcharge is so, so good, considering how often we want to use sentry for sentry jumps, regen for uh, wave dashes and regen dashes, and how often we want to use bow or combat. It's just absolutely essential to have as much energy as possible, and overcharge doubles it. So, yeah, completely necessary. We uh, also, Seal did spend uh, a little extra time uh, shopping anywhere using a glitch that lets them, you know, shop anywhere. It's pretty nominative. <laughs> Um, and bought the extra ability Wing Clip, um, which only is uh, applicable to one enemy that we really intend to fight in this route. Uh, there's a few in the mini boss room, but like, they melt anyways. <laughs> so, it's, it's a little bit of a time loss to pick up the extra Spirit Light and the Shop Anywhere for it, but it can absolutely help in that one fight that we use it for. So, we'll see if, uh, we'll see how fast Seal can absolutely obliterate the, uh, what's it called, Willow Stone, I think, as uh, we'll get to that much, much later on, maybe like 40 minutes later on. 
But for now, both of our runners are into the cutscene of the Blind Forest characters getting on a boat, having some nice boat adventures themselves. Uh, but Ryan will be through the cutscene first, and with some great aerial sentries, is able to skip straight up to basically the end of this area instead of taking the long way around. Uh, we'll see if Seal can hit those aerial sentry jumps just as well, uh, because again, they are frame perfect with a exactly three frame window in order to get the height. Um, so <laughs> it's difficult and oh yeah, Seal pulls it off with a plum. I think that's the definition that word is or <laughs> that word is used in English. <laughs> but yeah, both of our runners now having ascended, uh, skipped a little bit of the wellspring, will be getting their next ability, which is grapple. Uh, Ryan hitting the stick a little bit, but will make it to grapple first. Uh, of course, still in lead, uh, but it looks like that has come down quite a bit. Um, both runners look like they're going for the bow setup, and Seal gets it. Ryan does not. So that'll help close the gap a little bit. Uh, at this tree, it was a 17 second difference um, for Ryan in the lead. But again, since uh, Seal got the extra, the extra, but, but, but what's the word? The extra, the extra tree animation skip. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Since Seal got that, that'll save a little bit of time as well. Seal did have to also grab the lever uh, after the tree, so that'll lose a little bit of time, whereas Ryan grabbed it before the tree. But still, some time made up for Seal here as we get into our first combat arena of the game. So I've already mentioned how awesome Bow is, and Ryan's going to show that off. Um, with Overcharge, uh, with Splinter Level 2, and with Quick Shot, enemies go bye-bye. <laughs> Especially when Ryan already knows exactly where they will spawn, he just spawn camp them into oblivion, completely deleting this fight from existence. And that's that's going to be the case for most of the fights in the game. Our runners know the patterns of the enemies, know spawn points, and have the upgrades required to just melt faces with bow. So yeah, Seal also showing off here, just obliterating this. Uh, gauntlet of enemies, so both of our runners will be getting through and progressing further up into the Wellspring. Because we need to get soggy. <laughs> so, yeah, that uh, is part of the main quest, is we need to clear the Wellspring uh, escape in order to, you know, clean the water. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan! Ooh, okay, makes it. Great backup midair sentry jumps there to keep moving forward. That's a laser. Okay, so avoids the laser. Ryan is through. <laughs> Still on one health, so some of these spikes could be very fun to face plant into, but yeah, another great aerial sentry to recover will keep him safe as he is now headed up um, from here straight into the final room. Seal, still hot on his tail, uh, will be coming up as well, trying to get the good cycle. Yep, takes a little bit of a spike hit, but does make it, and will be following straight through. So yeah, per still pretty neck and neck for our runners. There's about one major mistake, maybe even one minor mistake between them. Uh, ooh, speaking of, Ryan missing some mid-air sentries. Really difficult timings, uh, but does get a great backup. Dashes over to grab some extra energy, and that will let him recover uh, in order to get up to the Wellspring escape. So we'll see if Seal can hit these mid-air sentries. That might save a little bit more time. Oh, beautiful mid-air sentries from Seal. Uh, will, yeah, save that little bit of time. There's still a lead for Ryan, but that might be coming down little bit by little bit as we go now into the Wellspring Escape. Uh, our runners will be skipping the cutscene at the start. There is a frame-perfect thing that, uh, okay, neither of our runners got. They do get the backup, though, which is still very fast, just exiting and re-entering. Uh, we'll skip the cutscene of the big tentacle spooky monster grabbing you, and we'll let them get into the escape that much faster. Now, the escape, uh, while it is a pretty standard uh, Ori escape, um, and our runners have done it many, many times and know all of the traps and things that could screw up here, uh, it's still a little dangerous. With just a bit of mixed execution, it can uh, actually end up in a death, especially for Seal, who's on one health. Oh my god. <laughs> and if you die, uh, you get to redo the entire thing. And of course, that's slow as fuck, so neither of our runners want that, and neither of our, of our runners will have to do that. That is two first try Wellspring escapes, and both our runners will now be getting soggy at the exact same time. Ooh, uh, our truck is pointing out. Um, there is a six second difference now between the runners. Uh, Ryan in the lead by those six seconds, and 
earlier I mentioned um, that Seal said his early game is bad and his late game is stonks. And now early game's over. So the the part that Seal was most worried about is behind him. Now he has to do the mid-game boss rush, and then he can get to his stonks. Which, um, considering that there's only a six second difference, if he pops off, absolutely could seal the deal for this race. <laughs> because, yeah, look at that. We're just getting double soggy. <laughs> it's great. Um, but Ryan will be out of the cutscene slightly faster because he started it slightly earlier. And so our runner is still neck and neck. Luma Pool. Um, if you played this game, you know that this isn't actually where the main quest wants you to go. And you might be wondering what the heck our runners are doing. But it turns out the only flag for the main quest in Luma Pools is the Kolok boss fight itself. So if we don't ever do the boss fight, then we're not doing the main quest, and therefore we're not doing it out of order. So that allows our runners to come down here a little bit earlier. And check out Ryan's screen here. We're going to see a wave dash into a mid-air sentry jump. Oh, beautifully done. I love that movement. Seal uh, opting uh, not to do the wave dash portion, just to do a mid-air sentry jump to get up as well. So our runners are now into Luma Pools without Glide. They can't, they cannot fight Quolox. That would break the category rules, but they can go and grab Water Dash. They can go and grab Teleporters. And so that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, they can go and grab Keystones as well through this area that we'll be using for later. And so... We will, we will teleport back here in order to actually complete the main quest later on. But it looks like Ryan had a little bit of a missed sentry jump. And our runners are now basically tied. Uh, there's a tiny bit of desync considering the load differences between the two. But yeah, stupidly neck and neck right now as both runners are doing puzzle skip. So you just saw them jump into some spikes. Uh, that's intentional. If you do that... The puzzle in this room is just gone. <laughs> Why? It, it doesn't make sense. But our runners are going to abuse it anyway. Uh, that does have a little bit of a downside here. And that if you do the puzzle skip, there is a chance that the door that you're about to see on seal screen. Oh, damn it. I cast a cursed it. Uh, that door can just be closed. We're about to see Ryan. Ryan gets first try open door. So that will save time for Ryan. Seal has to reload and try again. Oh, no. Seal gets two closed doors. This could happen, theoretically, forever. Um, and it's just time loss that you cannot control. It's completely random. Seal, okay, Seal's third door is open, but that is a two-door difference between our runners. Ryan will take the lead back after that little door shenanigans right there. Um, Seal will now need to keep catching up as Ryan is almost into uh, the water dash tree. Yep, does a little bit of a, a whiff missing that keystone, but gets a good aerial sentry recovery to grab it, and that will be enough keystones to put into the door, allowing Ryan to get through and grab his water dash early, which is, you know, the entire reason we came here, as there's a little bit of a swimming section after Kolok, and this makes that faster, so that's what we are going to do. Um, seal taking, I believe, a little bit of a explosive mishap there uh has also lost a little bit of additional time um unfortunately but still not too too far behind and so heal his stonks now his end game stonks will have to have even higher growth uh, is that is that how economics works your stonks grow number go up <laughs> i don't know about economics i only know about ori speed running and i know that ryan is now to the teleport room Activates it and will now warp back to the Hornbug Arena, actually, because this is an all challenges category. And so we do need to do all the challenges, which means all the bosses. We skipped Hornbug a couple times earlier, um, specifically because we didn't have all the bow upgrades we wanted, but now we do. And so check out Ryan's screen here because this health bar is going to melt with um, all of the bow prowess that we have. And knowing this boss's patterns really well, Ryan can just kind of pop bow shot after bow shot after bow shot straight into uh, Hornbug's big glowing weak spot in his butt and just demolish this boss, uh, getting a little bit of bad RNG in terms of the patterns, but not too bad altogether. And so he finishes up the fight just as Seal is starting it. So 
about a one horn bug difference between our runners right now. Seal getting a little bit of a better pattern, might have a better time. We'll see. Oh, okay. Seal does manage to get under horn bug for this part of the phase. But after horn bug is cleaned up, uh, we do have to get back on the main quest order. Order. <laughs> and that means going through Silent Woods and getting to Koo. And so Silent Woods is is one of the is one of the um, most technical areas in basically the entire run. Um, just a lot of really really minute things that our runners will have to pull off uh, in order to save actually kind of massive amounts of time, all things considered. We've already seen Ryan do a little bit of a cutscene skip just by jumping over a trigger. It's, uh, Seal's doing the same thing right here, where you just get to a save point without hitting the ground, and that lets you refresh. Back to uh, eyes on the Ryan side of the screen, we'll be going for a cutscene skip here, barely weaves his way between a cutscene trigger and a wall, and that will allow him to get over the cutscene trigger and into Silent Woods proper, with a great wave dash, because again, Ryan is just like the god of wave dashes, <laughs> getting into this area. Ooh, doesn't get the height he needs, but luckily there's a checkpoint like right there, so not too, too much time loss. Uh, for him. Seal gets the same cutscene skips as well, though, so we'll be falling hot on Ryan's heels into Silent Woods uh, as we grab a little bit of extra keystone. And then, once we open this keystone door, eyes on Ryan's side of the screen, because it's time for Coo Skip. This trick is ridiculously difficult. You have to launch yourself into the air with a bonkers ridiculous trick uh, it's, I believe, called a regen sentry dash is the strat that both of our runners will be doing. Um, so keep an eye on our Ryan's side of the screen. Gets a good launch. And yeah, is over the cutscene. That skips having to see Koo. Seal is also right there. Ooh, okay. It has a little bit of a mishap. Again, this trick is super duper duper precise. Um, Seal, unfortunately, might be out of energy here. Yeah, okay. Seal is going to take a, uh, a quit to menu in order to refill his energy uh, in order to keep trying this track because it does save quite a bit of time in order to skip coup uh, as we see ryan has done launching up exact same trick again off a pile of leaves to trigger that cutscene um but this is main quest order in order to complete the main quest you need coup so <laughs> we have to do a trick called coup unskip next which ryan is in the middle of doing where if you just go back, hit a checkpoint, and die, the game is like, oh, uh, you should have coup at this point. Okay, so the game just gives you coup for free, um, not having to watch the cutscene. So that is what Ryan does, and has now achieved coup, <laughs> and will be riding our little baby bird friend around for uh, the rest of the run, I'm sure. Um, because Koo is adorable, and, okay, Koo's also really slow. <laughs> As we can see here with Ryan, uh, Koo can't sentry jump, so you just have to float upwards. Koo also can't wave dash, so you just have to walk or glide. It's, yeah, Koo's slow, and we would much rather not be on Koo, which is why Koo skip saves time, even though we have to do Koo unskip. Seal also now has made uh, their way to Koo unskip. As Ryan takes an intentional death, Oh, they were slightly too early on the death, uh, so not able to get the proper ghost door. But we'll just use a quit to menu instead to do about the same time, about the same thing, in a little bit more time. Seal, on the other hand, does get the coup unskip. They have been uh, having a little bit of trouble with their sentry dashes. Um, not sentry dashes, wave dashes. <laughs> Which again, that's the trick that Ryan is like ridiculously good at, and like the master of. So. Yeah, definitely Ryan saving some time over their opponent by just nailing every wave dash they go for. Um, but Seal still not too, too far behind. Um, okay, Ryan's not going to go for the ridiculously scary thing, thank God. <laughs> but both runners with Koo now just need to get through the rest of this area in order to see uh, the cutscene that triggers the rest of the main quest, um, which is a very, very... For me, happy cutscene, because it means you get off coup, <laughs> and that means you can wave dash and sentry jump again, which is fast, and fast things are good. So, Ryan will be the first one to get there. There is a couple more skips before that, so we'll see him do some precise jumps here to get into a save trigger. Yep, and then there's one more on Ryan's side of the screen. It's ridiculously tough to get. Um, it's called Scare Skip. It saves, uh, like eight or nine seconds, um, and it is... Maybe one of the hardest tricks in the game. 
Uh, it's not too penalizing if you lose it, luckily. Um, but Ryan, ooh, looks, oh no, okay. Uh, Streak does decide to give him a little spooky, scary jump scare. Um, so that's a little bit of time loss, but not a big deal. We'll see if Seal can save time by hitting that. But again, that's that trick is stupidly precise, and I have no idea why. <laughs> but with that, oh, Seal. Okay, Seal falls down a little bit, but uh, is able to hit a bubble in order to recover, get back up. Um, I'm wondering maybe if Seal is having any nerves right now. Uh, they're just not able to hit their wave dashes consistently, and like that that slip up right there. Uh, you gotta wonder if they're feeling nervous. Maybe if they're watching Ryan's stream and seeing his uh, his pace, that could be a little bit nerve wracking for an opponent. <laughs> so definitely would not blame him for being nervous at all in this best of one single elimination semifinal match between our two runners. <clears throat> so Seal skipping the cutscene. Uh, we'll see if he gets scare skip here in just a sec. Again. Stupidly precise, but it's totally possible. Uh, ooh, that looks pretty good. I like it. No! Ah, oh, man. I caster cursed that for both of them, so I guess it's fair, but either way, that is it then. The last trick for uh, both of our runners in Silent Woods, and we will now be progressing to the boss rush of the mid-game, Ryan first. So, uh, if you played the game... You know that there are four wisps at this point, which I tried to name in the last cast, and I just, uh, I like forgot one of their names, and I don't know which ones they are because they're really interchangeable. <laughs> but the bosses are Mora and Quolak, and then there's an escape on Bower and Sandworm. We have to leave the Sandworm for last in this category. So let's that lets our runners choose Mora, Bower, and Quolak. And the order I just said them, Mora, Bower, Quolak, is the order that both of our runners will be doing as it is the optimal route um with you are a high tier runner who can you know more uh even though you have not a ton of extra help <laughs> so ryan heading right into moldwood will be blasting on through that area and is actually 21 seconds ahead of his pb like in a tournament race he is gaining time over his pb i cannot believe what we're seeing from ryan right now it is spectacular gameplay here as yeah like i yeah again seal should be nervous ryan is pulling off a clinic on how to run main quest order basically perfectly so we will be going into moldwood and um ooh, uh what was that so okay the darkness in moldwood kills you if you've been it in been in it for too long normally you need like a firefly or the ability flash in order to push back the darkness but um Turns out Bo also pushes back the darkness, conveniently enough, because we have Bo already. So our runners will be both be using Bo, just shooting it off a little bit when they are uh, close to the darkness, closing in on them. That will recover their darkness meter and allow them to keep going through this area. Uh, so Ryan pulled out Bo and died when I started explaining this. But a uh, quick recovery from him with an amazing wave dash will be blasting into Mora's fight. Uh, and this is very difficult and also very spooky scary. <laughs> uh, Seal also has a little bit of a spooky scary death with the with the water preventing him from pulling out Bow and therefore preventing him from getting any extra light source. But does get the backup very quickly through this area. will be trying to follow in uh, to get to Mora themselves. But Ryan... On the left, starting this fight. It's a very, 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 very dangerous fight. And, um, that's because our runners don't have a ton of health and energy. Um, but they have overcharge equipped, which helps with the energy, but also makes them take double damage. Their health is even less. Um, so that means a couple wrong moves with Mora can lead to a death, which can lead to doing Mora again, which can lead to Mora doing different patterns than you want, which can lead to another death, which, uh, yeah, no, we don't want to see any of that. So Ryan, oh my god, I'm like half a health, please, 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 I'm super scared. Okay, Ryan gets through phase one, thank goodness. Um, phase two is a little bit of a breather, if Ryan wants, he can use uh, regen in the middle of one of these logs here, because Mora is a little bit slow and isn't good at catching up to us. <laughs> Um, and Seal is also into the fight. We'll see if Seal can have a little bit less of a uh, heart attack-inducing uh, phase one. But uh, 
On Ryan's side of the screen, phase three has started. Ryan did heal, though he's back up to full health, places some sentries, and a switch to Reckless. So now, won't be taking as much damage, only 15% extra, instead of just straight up double damage. But at the same time, uh, Ryan now uses double the amount of energy he would with Overcharge. So that can be really risky, especially when in this phase of the fight, we need to use Bow constantly in order to keep the light on Ori. But Ryan with a full energy refill, some sword swings for extra damage, having no trouble at all. Phase three of Mora finishes off this fight spectacularly and is next on to Bower's Reach. Seal, in the meantime, also on phase one, does run out of energy, but with quick thinking, manages to grab an energy crystal on the wall. We'll be heading into his uh, escape sequence, part two of Mora's fight. So, has a little bit more health. And we saw Ryan do have earlier, but we'll also be going for a quick regen in this log in order to just make sure that they are on full health for phase three, which again, super dangerous fight, but um, hopefully we'll be nailing it just as well as we saw Ryan do a second ago. Meanwhile, Ryan heading into Bower's Reach uh, has to say hi to the best animal in the game, only one that doesn't try to murder you on sight, actually, <laughs> which is Bower. Um, Gonna, gonna tickle his nose a little bit, give him a sneeze, and then we'll be moving on into Bower's Reach. Turning eyes back to Seal screen. Yeah, Seal just absolutely obliterated Mora as well. Great fight from both of our runners. No huge time losses in that very scary fight. So Seal will be following Ryan now into Bower's Reach. Um, we do have an update that there is a 54 second time difference between the runners. Um, I don't know when that was. I bel I think it was at the start of, of Mora. And yeah, okay, at the end of Mora, an update 50 seconds. So Ryan lost four seconds to Seal, but still 50 more gap between them as we head into Bowers. Um, about ha over halfway through the run now, absolutely. Um, and again, Seal has said this is his bread and butter, so maybe we'll see some spectacular comeback here. But Ryan, again just destroying this game. Um, we'll be heading into Bower's Reach. And uh, if you notice, we kind of skipped grabbing Grenade. In the same way we skipped grabbing Flash, it's because we don't need it. Um, <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, Sentry, when it explodes, gives off a little burst of flame. And so Ryan uh, earlier dropped one in a place to break some ice. And here, right now, yep, drops one right on top of that lantern. So that when the Sentry explodes, it will take out the lantern and therefore allowing Ryan to get through this door without ever needing to grab grenades. That is another skill that we just skip for convenience's sake in this run. Uh, Seal will be doing the same thing. Um, first with the, the ice wall break skip. I don't know if that has a proper name. Uh, the, the names for things in this in this game do tend to be pretty liberal, so I would not be surprised if it was ice wall break skip. <laughs> but yeah, does nail it with the well-placed uh, sentry and we'll be following Ryan into the combat arena, which Rome has just obliterated. Um, again, knowing where all the enemies spawn and having all of the upgrades that we do for bow and for energy management, just lets Ryan jump behind these Gorleks when they yell at him and then just pop, 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 couple bow shots into their butts and they go down like that. And with that, Ryan will now be the first to head up into Bower's uh, escape. <clears throat> There's a trick coming up at the start of the escape. Okay, there's a trick right there as well. Because again, Ryan, knowing like every cool movement tech in the book, does a, I believe, sentry wave dash to just launch up that, um, that all area. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Um, and also with a midair sentry dash, gets over the cutscene trigger, but also manages to not um, hit, kill the void plane at the top of the screen. And with that, we'll skip the cutscene to enter the escape. Uh, if Ryan dies during the escape, we'll have to do the same trick again. So it's a little bit risky with how well he's been playing so far. I have no doubt he's gonna just blitz through this escape. Very, very well done. Uh, keep an eye out if you missed it from Ryan on Seal screen, because we're going to hopefully see that same um, cutscene skip here, where Seal will just launch over a cutscene trigger, but not into the ceiling of the world. Yeah, nice dash to stop from hitting, stop him from hitting the void plane. And with that, uh, Seal is into the final escape. Ryan has already finished it. Getting a nice little pep talk from the best boy of this game, Bauer. 
um, will now be heading off to fight Quolock, uh, my least favorite enemy in my casual playthrough because Quolock's fight is nasty. Um, luckily, our runners do have a bit of extra health uh, and energy from beating Bower and Mora first. That will make this fight a little bit safer, can still be very scary, um, but again, these are top two runners, they've executed super duper well. Seal so managing to complete Bower's escape without any problems. And keep an eye out on Ryan's screen, I mentioned this earlier, this cutscene, uh, if you glitch into it the right way and stack two cutscenes, you can just bounce up and down and over. <laughs> It's great. Kolak has a lot of cutscenes around him. There's nothing much to do. So Ryan is just having fun. Boingy, boingy, boingy in the poison water, which doesn't damage him at all. So with that, he will be starting his Kolak fight uh, right now. It looks like Seal, yeah, looks like managed to get the same cutscene stack. So we'll be boinging over there on his side. But there's action now happening with Ryan. Uh, if Kolak decides to start, the, yeah, okay. Kolak decides to start the escape. <laughs> needs to break a wall in order for Ryan to get through. Ryan does want to do this section as fast as absolutely possible because Quolock rubber bands. Uh, so the faster Ryan will get through, the faster Quolock will catch up, and therefore the faster the fight will start. Uh, Seal also getting into that fight um, as you see that Ryan uh, Ryan's stream is being set, so it should be back up in hopefully just a sec. Uh, no worries. I'm sure that we'll see basically the same thing that we see from Seal, which is a mastery of Kolok's fight. Yeah, Ryan looks like already onto phase three of the fight. Um, just, yeah, our runners know how to melt Kolok. So this fight, despite how scary it is, making it look like a breeze. Ryan is getting a little bit of a noxious attack, this poison one, but with some great dodges, uh, and we're getting a freeze frame right now of how well he's just staying in the air and obliterating this boss here. Um, uh, as we resync the the games, so both of our runners now at the same timers uh, in in game time, and also the same boss fight. So seal through phase two as well. I count the escape as phase one, um, I guess. These runners are so good, man. I can't even. Um. And so, <laughs> so next, yeah, Ryan is the first finish with the cutscene. Again, has about 20 seconds of a lead over Seal right now as we head into Windswept Waste. And to get into Windswept Waste, we have to do a little bit of a skip. Um, normally, there's a bit of a stealth section where Shriek, Shriek tries to peck out your eyeballs, and you just have to hide. But our runners don't want to do that, because hiding is slow. So keep an eye out on Ryan's screen on the left because he will be going for ground skip, and likely the floor is lava version, where Ryan wants to not touch the floor at all. Oh, okay, doesn't get an aerial sentry, will touch the floor, and that means Ryan has to watch a little bit of a cutscene. Luckily, this cutscene won't actually start the, um, the stealth sequence, so Ryan will not have to do that, but that cutscene does lose a little bit of time just because of a missed aerial sentry, and so we'll see if Seal can get that. Um, and, oh no, okay, Seal misses a pogo off the skeleton and is actually going to reset the trick entirely, um, because missing that skeleton pogo, oh no, again! Oh boy, okay, that has got to be nerve-inducing. Uh, just needs to hit a down slash instead of a side slash here, and, uh, <laughs> sorry, Ryan screamed, <laughs> the cauldron just decided to have, like, a seizure, <laughs> and just killed him for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love this game. <laughs> Luckily, there's a save point right there, so Ryan will be just fine. But, <laughs> well, well, I was laughing about that. I uh, I did miss Seal nailing Feeding Ground Skip Floor is Lava on the third try. So, we'll maybe still lose a little bit of time to those few deaths, but not having to watch the cutscene that Ryan did. So, probably about even, maybe a little bit of extra time. Uh, save for Ryan and oh my god, it's so Seal basically to avoid the death. Somehow with the giant swinging rock bashing his face in. <laughs> I don't know man, it's great. This game is great. <laughs> Both burners 
now having Burrow, can make their way through the back half of, uh, I want to say Moldwood Wastes, but <laughs> Windswept Wastes. There we go. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna portmanteau these names. <laughs> through Windswept Wastes which is um, required because at the very end of this area is the next main quest, uh, which is to get Sire. Um, the Wisp, or the, the big the big Wisp that has the big will, which is, you know, the, the name of the game, the will of the Wisp. It's, it's plural, because I guess there are multiple of them. But Sire is the one that matters. So our runners will be moving over to get him. Um, <laughs> And that means dodging lasers, burrowing quickly, and um, taking laser damage here in a sec, as we're going to see from Ryan. He has enough health to do it, so we're just going to see him rush right up to this laser, bash it in the face, and get through saving a bit of time by going around slowly. Um, Seal also doesn't get, d does a damage boost here. Ryan did earlier. So both runners with optimal damage boost, still having enough health to make through the rest of this run. Oh! Ryan, what a clean wave dash. Again, just he's the master of this tech, and he's been showing it off brilliantly throughout this run. And like every possible instance where it might come in handy. Um, so we'll see hopefully a couple more of those throughout Storytime Temple here as Ryan first goes for a cutscene skip. Okay, doesn't get it first try. There, gets a second try. Some of these cutscenes can be skipped. Uh, not all of them. It's a little weird. So yeah, this one Ryan's just gonna float on into listen to the Wisp talk a little bit, and then continue on. Seal is also approaching Storytime Temple for themselves. There are, again, lots of cutscenes that you can skip. So Seal doing one at the beginning there. We'll see if Seal can get this one first try. Yeah, it does manage to get over that cutscene trigger first try. So again, not too much of a time difference between our runners. Basically just one story time between them. That Seal is on the second mural and Ryan is on the third. Oh, it's so close. This is such a good race! I can't believe it. But after a little bit more story time, we will have the Sandworm Escape, which could absolutely uh, change the tides with one minor bonk leading to one major death. Um, ooh, okay, Ryan gets a pretty tricky cutscene skip there where he uses a wave dash to blast over the cutscene trigger and hit a save point before um, or he tries to walk back into the cutscene. So with that, uh, Ryan has skipped the fourth. We'll see if Seal can get the same thing. No, okay. Seal hits the cutscene trigger and therefore will uh, will have to just watch a little bit of it before getting down here. And Ryan will then be the first one to start the big story time. There's a lot of story time. There's a reason we call it Story Time Temple. Um, it's very, it's a very nominative name. <laughs> But yeah, both runners just gonna watch the uh, the five the five wisps that we have collected over the course of the run uh, fusion hot together in order to become Sire, and uh, that is the main quest that we need to complete. But there's one more thing we need to do before actually getting Sire like officially officially, because Sire makes a big scary loud worm very angry and chasey, murdery. So our runners will both have to run away from this worm uh, through a fairly tight escape. Um, if you bonk in a couple of sections, it can almost mean instant death unless you have a perfect recovery. So hopefully our runners will, you know, make it through unscathed, knock on wood. Uh, just this can be a time loss, especially if you die towards the end of it. Because you have to do the entire thing over again. So Ryan will be the first one to start this escape. He has a 15 second lead over Seal uh, coming into the start of the escape. Takes a quick intentional death to put him a little bit further along the start of the escape. And will now be burrowing his way up, down, and through. Narrowly dodging some spikes here. That looks like Ori got a haircut right there. Or a tail cut or a back cut. Whatever, all of Ori's body parts got a their fur cut, and <laughs> but Ryan does manage to get through. He will also get him through the same section. Uh, look to go for yeah, a um, a sentry air dash. I uh, forget the name of it. Tricks are cool. <laughs> Ryan giving the tail a little bit of a hug. Uh, falls out of the sand. He gets right back in, straight 
great recovery there from Ryan. Um, and now into the tighter sections, takes one of the jumps a little bit slow. Definitely understandable. The way dash up here, the tightest section, especially if uh, running on keyboard and mouse, which I believe they are. But Ryan does manage to make it through, finishing off this sandworm escape without death. Seal coming up to the exact same really tight section. Burr blasting through, takes a little bit of a bump, good recovery, and also is through. Woo, boy. Super, super duper close for our runners here as they are going to stand here in the exact same place so that they can catch up to each other. It's it's great sportsmanship from our runners. You love to see it. <laughs> I'm, of course, Joe. Oh, okay. Nine lies. Seal? Seal, are you going for it or not? Seal? Okay, I should explain. <laughs> uh, this area, you're supposed to walk forward into a cutscene, which takes 48, 49 seconds, something like that. Um, Seal is kind of like inching towards, but I don't think he's going to go for it. Because if you wait exactly 42.5 seconds, you're allowed to teleport away. <laughs> and so that's faster than the cutscene by like five seconds, I believe. So with that, uh, our runners will be skipping that cutscene, taking a little bit of time. It does mean that they're not getting um, an extra health and energy cell from the cutscene. So going into final, final, final end game, uh, a little bit low, but to how well both our runners have been doing, uh, I definitely don't expect them to take major, major deaths um, because of one health loss. But you never know. Uh, anything can happen, especially in a tournament race. So we'll have to see how it goes as we get into both of our runners in the elevator section. There are four golems here that you need to murder. Um, but again, we know where they spawn. We have Bo, and we have like a bajillion upgrades for Bo that just let us build the Bo, and then face pigs will melt. As long as they don't have their shields up, our runners will just be... Again, burp. I don't know what I'm doing with my mouth. <laughs> They're just going to be bursting through these bosses. Not bosses. Bursting through these Gorlex. So Ryan has already finished his fourth. Uh, Seal is Seal's fourth is just spawning. There is one Gorlex difference between these two runners. Oh my god. Like, I... It's... It's so good. It's so good. This race. I can't... It's... Mm. I can't wait to see the finals too, but only one of these runners can make it. And all that standing between them and the finals is of course well, their opponent, but also getting launch and then getting through the final dungeon of the game. So Ryan was, oh my God, Ryan was 13 seconds ahead of PB in a tournament race this late. What the heck? It's so good for a top tier runner to be at the top of his game. Like, literally the best he has ever played this, this game up to this point. I... What on earth, Ryan? You are popping off. <laughs> Seal as well, like, keeping up with Ryan's PB pace, um, uh, was 15 seconds behind at the end of the Sandworm Escape. So get just, like, neck and neck doesn't even cut it. They're like... This is like... Like a hair between them. This is where you have to do like a freeze frame at the end of the racetrack is how close these runners are to each other right now. And so it, it's all going to come down to execution in the final dungeon, um, which can be very difficult as there are quite a bit of weird, tricky cutscene skips and tricks that runners will be going for. Uh, specifically with the Willow Hearts, you can break them with bow and then dash away. Um, and that will get you um to a save point and then you can reload the game so our runners will be doing that as much as possible in order to you know not watch those cutscenes as much as possible so they will now oh my god neck and neck they're on the same heart in willow's end like ah i can't fangirl enough about how cool this run is and how cool these runners are as they are now both breaking their second heart both of them getting the cutscene skip very, very well. Like, I, I don't know what else to say besides this is so hard. <laughs> Although, you can say, Seal is one minute behind his PD. So, might not be on his best pace ever, but it's enough to keep up with Ryan as of right now. And again, 
And all it takes is one victory. So Ryan attempting Quidditch here. A really difficult set. We have to get some nice angles. Oh, okay. Ryan does it. Nearly, nearly bashes back in to the projectile, um, but manages to not do that. Um, Seal did mess up his first attempt at Quidditch. Oh, and no, his second attempt too. Uh oh, this could be, that could actually just be the deciding factor in this race. Quidditch is a very, very difficult trick. You have to hit some precise angles and be very, very fast. Oh, again, Seal almost gets hit by the Quidditch shot, but manages to make it through. Third try, so not too, too much time loss. So any time loss right now could prove fatal at uh, Seal's tournament run as Ryan has already finished the Burl Heart, their fourth heart. Ryan is halfway through Willow's End. Seal keeping hot on his tail, but will it be enough? It doesn't, I don't know. It's so close. Ryan makes the death. Go <laughs> Every time, every second matters in this race. So Ryan will recover pretty quickly. Not too big of a time loss, but gets off a perfect wave dash, is looking to be back in form. Uh, it looks like Seal missed a cutscene skip. So again, that's just minor time loss that could be the difference in this run. So I can't believe what I'm seeing right here. This is so spectacular to watch. Oh my God. Okay, so oh, I have to calm down. Keep talking, keep focusing. Ooh, Ryan misses a cycle. The elemental just not giving him the projectiles he wants to keep up. Again, that's just a little bit of time loss. Uh, does manage to get through on the next cycle though and will break his fifth heart. Seal now starting the fifth heart. So there's one heart approximately between our two runners, and they have, well, while Seal has four to go, Ryan has three to go. Oh boy. And of course, uh, something that I mentioned like 30 minutes ago that now comes back into play is that Seal bought wing clip. So the box, the portal box that you're about to see Ryan do, um, you'll see Ryan melt this thing off. It's probably the easiest box in the game for speedrunners because we optimize uh, our loadout so well to just destroy the thing. But even then, Steel has optimized his loadout even further and will be able to destroy this boss even faster. Yeah, you see there, equips wing clip in, uh, what's that, like 50% extra damage to flying enemies? So this boss, again, blink and you'll miss it from Ryan's side, but you did just miss it from Seal's side. The boss vaporized. That is a huge time save for Seal. And uh, it's going to be even more neck and neck then coming into the seventh and eighth hearts and that means it's anyone's game still this late into the run. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. It's so, so close. It is, we are hearing from our incredible trucker who's been keeping up with all this. Seven seconds. There is seven seconds between our runs and two hearts left to go. And there's a shriek. A shriek also has a lot of RNG, so it could go Either way, at the blink of a, at the drop of a hat, at the blink of an eye, Ryan takes the death. Ryan takes another death. Oh my God. He is managing to get through, but that gives Seal just a little bit more time to come back. They're both going through this very dangerous section on fairly low health. You want to take some damage boosts through the lasers, but at the same time, if you take those damage boosts, you can't really take any other damage at all. So seal managing to get through ryan has finished off the eighth heart now all ryan has left to do in order to clutch out this race is to get to shriek bop the bird in the face oh no seal does actually fall into the pepto bismol takes the death again hopefully not no. oh i jinxed it i'm so sorry seal it's okay runners can still come back shriek can be rng shriek can be chaos and this run is so 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 so, so close between both our runners ryan is about to start the shriek fight and that is the first phase let's talk about it the first phase is fairly scripted Shriek will always start with the same pattern of attack so if our runners execute very very well they can manage to defeat shriek with those same attacks and yeah ryan only needs three attacks in order to get to phase two we'll be moving into that phase phase two is an escape Fairly sequenced. Um, I mean, it's an escape. There's not a ton that Shriek can do to uh, break anything. Um, oh no. Oh no. Seal. Oh no. Sorry, I'm gonna turn her attention to Seal's side of the screen. Seal missed one of the cutscene skips. And that means that the the blob, the Willow Heart, actually respawned. So, doesn't have to quit it again in order to break the wall, but does have to go back down here in order to uh, hit the blob. 
actually might have to go and do punch again. Um, I didn't see the seal. The seal see the wall is up. Okay, yeah, no, the wall isn't up. So seal will be heading in, breaking that. But that means Ryan's already in the middle of phase three. I barely had any time to talk about it. Ryan blasting through this phase. Um, presumably got some good RNG considering how incredibly fast that was. We'll take an intentional death here to refill his health and energy. And now Ryan is on to phase four. The final fight. The final boss. Of the final phase of the game, I can't even talk with how excited I am about this. It's pretty scripted from here. This corner of the, the platform is safe, so Ryan will be hiding here, refilling his health, and then we'll just have to dodge the swoops that are come out in set directions. So Ryan presumably has uh, a pattern memorized in order to be able to dodge these. Yeah, we'll sentry jump over the first one, dash behind the second one, all below the third one, launch over the fourth one. And now, keep an eye on Ryan's screen. It has all come down to this. Ryan just needs to get enough damage on the street before she flies away. And... No, no, no! <laughs> Ryan still will start phase four over again. Seal is now in phase two. If that happens again to Ryan, could absolutely equalize this race. Ryan has to wait through this entire sequence of Shriek stomping on the ground again while Seal keeps... keeps gets to keep blasting forward through phase two, the um the escape part of this phase. But again, Seal still has phase Seal still has phase three to get through in order to keep up. But Brian had a little bit of misstep. Hopefully he's not feeling too much nerves about that. Because Streak was like one health dude. Oh my god. Okay, Ryan's side of the screen. Keep an eye out. If Streak's health bar falls, there we go! Ryan has finished this race! Somehow his final time is 59-47. What a race! Holy crack and roll, we have fun! <laughs> that is so good, and Seal still putting on a great race. Um, likely not to get a sub hour, but only by barely, because their phase three also going very, very well. Will they be able to get Shriek in this phase? No, okay. They still have to have one more. And ah, oh, okay. Shriek RNG strikes again. It is the feather phase, so you can't attack Shriek during this phase. Seal will just have to wait it out. On Seal's next attack. Okay, that's another one that's really bad RNG. Swoops, you can't attack. But there we go. This will be the slam down, which Seal will use. Oh, Seal's actually out of energy. Has to do this with sword slashes. Does get it with sword slashes. Will be taking the intentional death here as well in order to uh, refill energy and is now onto phase four themselves. All Seal has left to do to finish out their run, which is still incredible <clears throat> in its own right, is to just the bird's face in, or burn the bird's face in, more likely, <laughs> uh, after dodging the same sequence of attacks, um, can save some time over Ryan's phase four, because Ryan, again, did die um, to the ending. Seal, you have two health. Seal, oh my god. Seal, Seal, how are you alive? Oh my god! <laughs> you can't do this! Seal, <laughs> we also finish off Shriek, getting a time of... 10101, a phenomenal time from Seal, a phenomenal race from both of the runners. I cannot believe how close that was through the entire race. Oh my god. I need to just take a sec to like just breathe because like that was so good. Both of the runners putting on a master class of this race, pulling off so many tricks. So many cups if they ever miss tricks. And then even when they died, they just made it closer. Ew. That was so unbelievably hype to witness. And I'm so glad that these runners gave me the opportunity to, 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 to see that run. Oh my god. So the final difference then between our runners is one minute and 14 seconds. A minuscule amounts of time in a one hour-ish run. Oh. I can't, I, I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. That was so good. So, with that out of the way, we are now done with both of our runs. And let's quickly go see if our runners are willing to come in for
Ooh, okay. All right. Um, it looks like Seal is on deck. We have not heard from Ryan yet. Uh, it looked like Ryan was finishing out the crawl. Because again, a lot of that for Ryan was on PB pace. Like above PB pace for like 10, 20, 30 seconds. Oh. So not surprising that they want to end out the crawl in case this does end up being a PB. Unfortunately, I don't think so. Just because of that um, that very, very unfortunate death in phase four. But still, like, that was really, like, the only major death in Ryan's entire run. Honestly, Seal didn't have too many major deaths either, or any major deaths. It was just that one heart that the, um, the cutscene skip didn't work for. Um, so... Oh, I'm so gonna, I'm so gonna pick our runners' brains about that. And we are going to now move them in and get ready to give our runners an interview. Ryan, Seal, GG! That was the most amazing race I've ever seen. GG's. GG. Yeah, you guys were neck and neck the entire time. And especially, I'm just gonna start out asking you both. Willow's End. Willow's End went... Phenomenally well, but also phenomenally almost wrong for both of you. Let's start with Ryan. In phase four, what happened there and when you were almost done with Shriek? Uh, I, I like I saw I was close to a sub-59. So I wanted to just do it as quickly as possible and just get as many bow shots. So I didn't do... Uh, the sword in between that I usually do, and uh, I ended up dying because of it. Yeah, it was... Uh, it had to have been like one health, but you, re you still managed to recover on the second one. Oh, uh, GG. And as well, Seal, that heart, I I, com I missed it too. What was going through your mind when you saw that? Like, how, how was just the emotions through your head at that point? I mean, I, I don't know. It's just like, it was it was terrible because I got to the door and as soon as I realized the heart was still there, I didn't even know which heart it was. And I was like, how am I gonna? F I, like, I was in some, like my brain went like full panic mode. How the heck am I gonna figure out which one it was? And I'm looking at the map and I'm like, wait, is that the the, the Quidditch heart? Like surely not. And then I like went there and then and then I'm like, I need to do Quidditch. And I'm like, no way, I don't need to do Quidditch. It was just like <laughs> everything was just like a complete absolute mess. Um, wait, what happens? I I had massive issues with cutscene skips on hearts for some reason I never normally do and I failed the cutscene skip on on heart three or Quidditch heart and then I didn't realize and left so oh, no. I got to the end where I wanted to go through the door to fight Shriek and then suddenly there's a heart alive and I had to like figure out what the heck was going on like, I knew what had happened I just didn't know which heart it was and I didn't really know like and yeah I just lost so much time from that like over a minute oh, that's yeah. terrible. It was still a great run, but that that might have been the deciding factor, unfortunately. Uh, because there was only about a minute difference between you guys at the very end. So, talking about, um, like, just the race, the state of it, you guys were performing super duper well against an opponent who was also performing super duper well in a best of one single elimination tournament. So I just want to get your guys' like, feelings. Were you feeling nervous? Were there any points where you were like, Oh no, I'm way behind. Were there any points where you were like, oh, I've got this, I'm in the zone? So let's start with Seal, you first. Yeah, I, I haven't had a lot of chance to practice this week, and I did a practice run this morning, and I got like six minutes behind PB. So I was like coming to this like, okay, <laughs> this is not gonna go well. Um, I wasn't really feeling particularly nervous. The first one I definitely felt nervous for a lot longer. This one I settled in pretty quickly, um, and I felt kind of fine. Um, and then, yeah, I think everything was going well, and then I completely messed up coup, the whole coup section, man. It was awful. I don't even know what that was. I was doing, like, regen S-dash, but it was turning into a wave dash somehow, and I wave dashed into the cutscene and had to QTM. I failed it a bunch of times, and then I couldn't do normal sentry dashes, and then that was a problem, and then I fell down in the middle of the coup section to, like, the bubbly area, and I'm pretty sure you should just die there, because I think there's, like, a save up top, or at least it would be way faster, but I spent, like, 20 seconds waiting for a freaking bubble to, so I could go back up, because I just didn't know what would happen if I died, and I didn't want to risk it. Um, yeah, so that, that was, like, 
not great. And then I had a really solid run after that and I caught up pretty much all the time. And I could have mm -hmm. finished ahead of my previous finish and then, yeah, the... Well, uh, I've forgotten the name of it. Willow Tree. The Willow Tree mishap happens and... Yeah, and I think that GG did race. I kind of knew from that point it'd be very unlikely that I'd be winning. Um, so I, I, but I was okay. I think overall I was happy with the run apart from those two sort of really awkward uh, places. Yeah, 100%. That was definitely still a ridiculous, ridiculously cool run to watch. But then, Ryan, the same question about nerves. Were you feeling them? Were there any points where you were feeling in the zone? Uh, what's your mental state in the best of one elimination bracket? Well, at the start, I was really nervous because my um, early game is one of the most inconsistent uh, parts of the entire run for me. So uh, I, I was really worried about just getting torch cuts, um, getting door skip, all that kind of stuff. And that went well, so the nerves kind of uh, went away. But after Quolog, I realized like I had a really good run and... Uh, then I checked uh, how far Seal was, and I saw that he was like really close, like 10 <laughs> seconds difference, probably yeah. even less. Yeah. And then I started getting really worried. Well, nerves hopefully weren't too bad of a factor, as you did clutch out that win. Um, and so with that, you're, you're now going to moving on to face Scarfelt in the Grand Finals. What are your opinions on that matchup with Scar and your feelings about finals? Uh, I'm pretty excited for it. I don't think I have much of a chance, to be honest. Like, um, I don't think Scar had a single run that was slower than any of my runs, except for the RTA run, but that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. So, I, But I kind of hope I can get at least one game off of them. Well, if you pull off what you've done today, you definitely have a chance. So best of luck to you. And then Seal, unfortunately, you were barely dropped out. Seal, that was an amazing run through the tournament, an amazing run today in semifinals. Are we going to be able to see more from you in Will the Wisps or other speedrunning projects for you in the future? Yeah, I have like this all in my goal of getting Sabala, or well, technically second place because Hatfield is just below Sabala. Um, I think it's kind of obvious from this tournament that my PB is is way too high. <laughs> like I'm getting too close to PB in a, in a best of one in the tournament. It just means my PB is not good enough IMO. Um, when I do that, I don't know. I would like to try and get it done by end of year, but I've got a really, really busy year. Um, so yeah, we'll just kind of see when, when it happens and when that falls for me. Yeah, I wish you the absolute best of luck with the grind then, sir. But that will be it for this bonkers amazing race. Um, thank you all so, so, so much for watching. Um, and as, as well, shout outs to Lix for being uh, an amazing truck, giving me all the stats about the time differentials throughout the race. To Appletree for being a restreamer, having this run actually able to be watched by people. Also, shoutouts to Zem, who is supposed to jump in with commentary, but is unfortunately sick. So, Zem, take my energy. Hope you get better soon. And I hope the rest of you will all join us in the Grand Finals. Currently, those aren't scheduled yet. Uh, so, keep an eye out on the Ori and the Blind Forest, Ori and the Will-the-Wisps Discord for more information on that. Uh, until those finals, we will see you then. Thank you all so, so much for watching this race, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.